guys and gals. Uh, it's Christine with Stitch All the Things. Um, today is Wednesday, March 7th. Um, this is the third time I've recorded this video. Uh, yesterday I recorded it and intended for it to load today, upload to, to YouTube today. And I was on some allergy medicine. My allergies were acting up. I was a little loopy, so I thought today I'll do it over. And I did. And then when I went to edit it all together, about halfway through my 45-minute video, the um, audio went out of sync. I, I think maybe some app did something. I, I'm not sure what. So anyway, um, I was going to record it tomorrow. My husband and I went out for date night, just got back, had our dessert with um, my youngest daughter, and I put my pajamas on. And he's watching a show that I'm not really interested in. And I told him, I'm going to go out and re-record this video. Um, I'm going to try to be briefer, though. I had a little bit of chit-chat and stuff in the other one. I'm not going to do that in this one. Because I'd really like to get this uploaded. I mean, if I record it tomorrow and it uploads Friday, and the whole week's gone by. So, anyway, um, I should have started. Welcome to my channel. If you're returning, thank you for coming back and spending some time with me. And if you're brand new, um, welcome. I, I hope you enjoy your visit with me today. Um, first, I wanted to do some thanks uh, and some shout outs. Big, huge, massive thanks to Leslie Hurley of Fat Cat Flossing. Um, fat and flossing are spelled with PH. Absolutely love that, Leslie. You are just awesome. Leslie's awesome. She, um, she shouted me out in two of her videos, and I've interacted with Leslie a bit on the, um, maybe not interacted, but I've seen her on the Stitch Mania group, and, um, and enough to, I don't know, I feel like I interacted with her. Anyway, I knew who Leslie was on Facebook, but didn't realize she had floss tube going on, and so I just watched, like, the last five videos of her, and in two of them, she shouted me out. So I just was really blown away by that. Um, thank you so much, Leslie. I just love you. If you haven't watched Leslie's channel, please go over there right now and after you watch mine. Um, and then um, go watch some of her videos. Say hi. She, um, um, I was going to say raises. That's not the right word. Um, she breeds Burman cats. And I'm in love with her cats. I love cats, but I can't have them because my husband is allergic. Leslie, if you're watching, thank you. Please give your kitties some love from me. Um, I just adore them, and I love when they pop up in your video, and I love how much they love you. Um, so anyway, big thanks to Leslie. Oh, and Leslie just finished a Henry O'Hare by Lizzie Kate. I don't think she's put a video up on that yet. I may be wrong, but uh, a, a finish of that on a video but go check out her Instagram fat cat flossing and um, go check out her Henry O'Hare piece it's just absolutely adorable and I have um, three shout outs now the other day I was watching Pam and Steph and Pam and Steph said at the end of this video you need to go watch cupcake flosser right away and so when Pam and Steph tell you go watch a video you go watch a video so um, I went over to watch Melissa cupcake stitcher Melissa is fantastic. If you haven't watched her videos, please go do it. I She's got two up. I've only seen the first one. Um, she just put another one up, I think, yesterday. But it's been a little crazy at my house. And I will get to it, Melissa, I promise. But in her first video, she's got some great finishes that she shares and whips. Um, she has a thug life piece that I just, I love it. Uh, Melissa, you did a fantastic job job with that piece. And uh, she's working on a Day of the Dead piece that when I saw that, I was like, oh, I love that. So I'm going to be excited to watch her progress on that. It just looks fantastic. I'm so sorry. I drank soda and then ate ice cream. So you know what that does, right? Like it all mixes and all of a sudden you got foam all. Anyway, control myself. Um, the other person I wanted to mention, really, really new in the last... I want to say a couple days, but I could be wrong because it's the end of today. And um, Rachel in Stitches. She is Rachel B3699 on Instagram. She just put out 
Um, she her very first video is like a two minute um, like picture show um, of her finishes and they're just beautiful. She has a bunch of Nora Corbett pixies in there. She's got a Chatelaine finish. Um, she's got some Joan Elliott finishes, at least one, maybe two. Just gorgeous stitching. Rachel, your stitching is gorgeous. Um, and then her first and second videos are up and she shows pictures of her finishes in them. Um, she is working right now currently on three Chatelaines. Three. Just gorgeous. Um, one of them is Medieval Town Mandala. Uh, the other one, I can't, I can't remember. I know, I know I should know them. I should have written it down. Um, but she even has one Chatelaine finish and it's Chinese Garden Mandala. And she did it all in DMCs and it's gorgeous. Um, please go check her out. Give her some love. Um, Rachel, I know you said you were super, super nervous in your videos. You did great. Please don't be nervous. Um, this community is so wonderful. And so, um, I hope everybody, you'll go over there and encourage her. Um, and then the last person, and, and as the saying goes, last but not least, um, I don't remember shouting her out before, but I meant to. Amy loves toads. Amy loves toads. You gotta love that name, right? Amy is fantastic. She has been leaving really uh, constantly positive, encouraging comments on my Instagram. And then I realized that she had floss tube. And then I think either Elena or Olivia B, one of the two shouted her out, maybe both of them even. Um, and then I, I was like, oh my gosh, that's Amy. I need to go check her out. And she's got some great um, whips and finishes that she showed. Um, really, really love her Air Force piece she's stitching for her son who's in high school ROTC. Um, absolutely gorgeous. She just finished, um, what did she just finish? I think maybe she was almost finishing up Hello Summer at, by um, Plum Street Samplers. And I was thinking I wasn't going to stitch that one. Um, and after I saw her piece, I didn't realize it had the bald eagle on it, um, with the, like the flag holding the flagpole in its beak. And I was like, I really need to stitch that one. So anyway, if you haven't checked those people out, please go watch their videos, give them a like, subscribe, leave them a nice comment, um, and just go give those floss tubers some love. Um, no chit chat this week other than I wasn't going to do my chit chat because I want to make it short but a couple people asked me why I don't like bunnies and I have two stories so if you just want to skip this part then skip to this time and that will just go right into the stitching my first thing is living in Arizona when I moved here um, when I first moved into this house there were three cute little baby bunnies that were born and were just in the gravel out front Arizona, we don't have lawns where I live. It's gravel. And I just thought they were adorable. My husband was irritated and I couldn't understand why. They're the cutest little things in the world. Why wouldn't you want these bunnies? And now those bunnies, I didn't understand. I was new to the desert. Those bunnies live in our neighbor's oleander bushes. And these oleander bushes are probably 13, 15 feet high, huge, wide, bushes and he only comes here he's a snowbird um and he only comes here once every other year these bunnies do what bunnies do and they've had babies and babies and babies now your older vehicles a lot of the wires are wrapped in rubber but they don't make them um, for some older vehicles they were using soy for a while um in the rubber wrapping in the hoses vacuum lines and whatnot and you probably know where this is going. The rabbits around here, they like that. And I've had two vehicles where I'd parked around back of our house on the gravel near the oleander bushes and the rabbits ate through the plug wires and the vacuum hoses. And I will show a picture of the aftermath of one of those visits here. I just, I hate these rabbits. 
I hate them with a passion. I see them and I wish, I'm not even going to tell you what I wish. I just wish they weren't here. They did that to a pickup truck of mine and then most recently they did that to the pickup truck of my son. They're just a pain in the butt. People don't believe me. You go search um, rabbits eating plug wires and you'll find there's an article. I think a bunch of people had that happen at the Phoenix airport. Um, they put their cars in long-term parking and came back and all their plug wires and stuff were um, chewed through. Yeah. It's rabbits. I've actually opened the hood and seen a rabbit. We, we had someone at the auto parts store say, oh, it's rats. I do not have rats around my house, people. And then I saw the rabbit. So, yeah, I was like, you know what to him. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, second story about the rabbits. Um, I will also tell you here, this is a farm life story. Farm life doesn't end well for the farm animals sometimes. And this was a bit of a tragic a trauma for me and my sisters when we were younger. There's a little graphic detail. So, again, if you want to get just straight to the stitching, go to here. And then you don't have to listen to my story. Okay, I just wanted to give people time to slide that slider on over. Um, when my sisters and I were younger, we would go up to Oregon and visit my grandparents and spend the summer on their ranch. And I think this is probably when I was 12 or 13 when this happened, which would have made my middle sister um, probably, I think, 10, 11 or 10. There's a... Anyway. And my youngest sister is five years younger than me. So, yeah, six six or seven. Anyway, we would feed the bunnies every day. My grandparents had some rabbit cages out by the barn. We'd go out and we'd feed the rabbits. And I mean, one of them, we'd, we wouldn't take it out of the cage unless an adult was there, but we'd pet it, play with it. And one day my uncle George came out with us to feed the rabbits and he pulls the rabbit out of the cage and he's holding it. We're petting it and loving on it. And then he grabs that rabbit by the ears and the back feet and he snaps it and my sisters and I were just in shock I think we just stared at him and then started bawling our eyes out my uncle's name was George the rabbit's name was George uncle George killed George we were just horrified at this happening so we ran up to the house and we're crying bawling our eyes out telling grandma and she's you know reading Uncle George the riot act why would you do that in front of the kids and you know I mean we're traumatized over this that he killed our rabbit in front of us why would he do that so at dinner my grandparents are from Arkansas and um so my grandma cooks like they cook in Arkansas and so I'm thinking oh we need comfort food tonight um and we go and we start eating dinner and she serves this she serves this weird sauce on the meat, and I'm like, what? What is this? It, it tasted awful. And at one point, I don't know if who said it. I don't know if Uncle George made a comment or Grandma or if we just figured that out. But I was mid-bite when we realized we were eating George. They fed us the rabbit for dinner that we bawled over all day long. They fed us George. I still, I still don't understand that. Like, I understand the farm life and you eat the food and whatnot, but don't kill the rabbit in front of us and then feed it to us after you told us to feed it and be nice and play with it all summer. Anyway, that poor rabbit. That's my rabbit story. It's not a huge fan of rabbits. Um... And it's mainly the wild rabbits that I'm not a fan of. But poor George, rest in peace. Um, okay, so that's that for my little intro, shout out, thanks, and a story. Okay, I'm going to get straight into what I worked on this week. I only worked on two things. One of them is a start and a finish of sorts and a work in progress now. This is Gabriel the Christmas Cactus. He is from the Prickly But Cute Stitch Along. I started the border, and I started in the bottom corner, and in the bottom corner happened to be Gabriel, 
but he's number five in the series. I was supposed to start up here with one. Um, there's going to be 15 on this. Um, so I hope I started in the right place. We'll see. Um, anyway, so he's cute, and I, I really wanted to get started on this in February, and I started this on February 28th, um, so it counts as a start, um, and, and working on it in February. So that's Gabriel the Christmas Cactus, and I probably won't work on that until maybe towards the end of March. Um, and then the other thing I did, I started my Chatelaine. This is how far I got, right to there. Just that little round part. Sorry. The frame is heavy. And there's Miss Belladonna. If you've seen my video, you know about Miss Belladonna. Anyway, I started this far out. This is um, Karen Water Lilies in Aubergine. And the reason I started out so far is all this in the middle. This is a lot of beads, special stitches, and treasures and metallics all right in here and so this was my full like circle around the mandala um and just floss just crosses um right in here though in this area this is all going to be one over one i've never done one over one before so i'm a little nervous about that but it'll be fine it'll be fun i'm i'm having fun but it took me like three hours just to stitch that because I was trying to make sure every stitch was perfect. Um, and yeah, so I was really extra careful. Um, that's it for all that I worked on this past week. It was kind of a crazy week. And maybe I'll go into it another time. Alright, that leads us straight into haul. Now this week, I only have two new things. But most of it is thrift store haul. Um, the first one was I got my Fabric of the Month Club um, Lynn linen I switched to linen from Lugana I think or maybe it was Joblin from under the sea fabrics this is a gorgeous blue you can see some of the greens in there um, absolutely love it this is 32 count linen um, in Galene Galene G-A-L-E-N-E I really really love this I can't wait to find something to stitch on this because um, that's just a beautiful blue color. Uh, the other new thing is, is actually if you watched my, um, how I organized my Chatelaine video, I was missing one of the beads and that just came in today. And that is just a really pretty color. Oh, it sort of matches my nails. Hmm. But I didn't do that on purpose. Um, this, these are Delica, uh, number 135s. Yeah, I was missing them. Emailed Cindy Ward and said, I'm so sorry. I don't know if I missed the date or not. Um, and she said, nope, my fault. I'll send them right out. And she sure did. Okay, so now thrift store stuff. I got some books from Hospice of Havasu. And everything, because I recorded this, everything's in kind of reverse order. i got to get it out here. Okay, sorry about that. First one was I got, um, the first one I got was the Best of Cross Stitch Basics. I really liked it because of this alphabet here. And a lot of it seems kind of older stuff. Um, this book was published in 2010 uh, when I looked earlier for the video. I was really surprised by that. Um, some of the baby stuff in there, it seems a little more dated than 2010. The sampler, I... I don't know, um, but I really like this hummingbird and the geranium. I'm probably never going to stitch that, but I really liked it. Thought it was pretty. It may change my mind one day. And there were a couple samplers in here that I liked. Really like this, this sampler. The red one. Oh, this one reminded me of Ginger Gerald. Oops, right here. Just because it, he was just showing a, a book in his own video and he noticed the cornucopias on a sampler and he liked them and I saw that and went, oh, Gerald! Um, another little sampler. Uh, so that was, this cute. All the charts in this one are color, color charts. I know a lot of people don't like that, but that didn't bother me too much. And um, another one I got just because I like to get um, books like this, the Margaret Boyle's book of needle art. This one just has different things like Bargello, 
um, patterns and there actually was one cross stitch pattern in here that I got this for um, and it's a sampler and the one thing I really liked about the samplers I noticed in a lot of them when they come to the corners they'll just do the line straight across here and keep going they won't put anything there and it just sort of rounds the corners I'm not a huge fan of that this one actually squares off the corner a bit um, I don't know why, but I really sort of liked it for that reason, um, that they put a little thing there. No other particular reason than that. Uh, this next one I got is called Next, next Stitch uh, Next Steps in Cross Stitch by Angela Beasley. And this was interesting just because, um, I mean, it's like kicking your cross stitch up like several notches. Um, the, the ribbon piece, the ribbons there, I mean, that's not cross stitch, you know? I mean, we're talking some serious needlework right there. And ribbon work, and there's beads in it. Love this elephant. And this border with the beads. Really love that. Um, I'm not a huge fan of elephants, but I saw that and I was like, oh, that's gorgeous. Looks like it's really stitched with a lot of metallics and beads. Um, and then I'm looking for a tab that I already passed. Um, this one has some, uses semi sheer fabrics. And one of the reasons I really bought it was this waterfall card. This is, um, Ada. And then they put a semi, semi sheer fabric over it, um, to create this effect and then have the stitching as the waterfall. And I just thought that was really, really neat concept. I've seen people stitch on double gauze and stuff. I think that's fascinating, but I couldn't do it. Here's another one with the semi sheer fabric. All of the water was done. All of this is one piece of semi sheer fabric. And then they cut out two other pieces of fabric and put it there and made it darker. I really found that to be fascinating. Um, I don't know that I would ever, ever do anything like that, but I have a book to tell me how in case I change my mind. And then they talk a bit about some gold work. And I thought that was, that was interesting because I don't know anything about gold work. Um, and then the last one I found these, did I say it all from Hospice of Havasu? Um, this is cross stitch designs from China. I do not know why, but I saw this book. And I looked through and saw the bright patterns and I thought of McKenna. Um, McKenna is just a bright, bold person. And I say those, use those words in the most positive way. I absolutely love her. I love, I just love how bold she is and how much she just owns who she is. And I don't know why I thought of McKenna. I don't know why I keep thinking of McKenna when I see this book, but I do. Um, it's from it's by Carol Phillipson and it's really fascinating all the cross stitch charts in here are in color um, I like the butterfly but uh, I really liked in in the beginning they even have their um, I'm trying to find I pass it my brain the day is almost over um, astrology, Chinese astrology, and they have a chart a thing you can stitch all for it. Um, of course, the, this chart only goes up to 2012, but of course you can easily change the years on that. Um, but yeah, all color. And they have a lot of great patterns in here. Dragon, the pottery, really love that. Make a ginger jar cushion. But I really like this bell pull. It's called Metallic Flower Bell Pull. And I love the colors in this. Um, I just, I don't know what draws me to this, but I really do. Love the colors. Um, this dinner plate setting, this is not my style at all, but those corals and that blue just, man, they just rock my world. I really, really love them. They've got some dragons in here, the dr Chinese dragon faces. Um, they've got some Chinese children playing in here. Uh, quite a few butterfly um, patterns. And this one, the Phoenix picture. 
I really love this. I really do. I may end up stitching that one day. I mean, these are not my style, but, oh, and I tabbed the back because the back of this book also happens to have black and white charts so you can take to a coffee shop and have enlarged. Um, then we went to Goodwill. And at Goodwill, I could not come home without these things. Um, the first thing, I found this little kit. It does not come with fabric or floss, but it does come with the metallic, um, uh, I want to say braid, but I don't think it's braid. It's just blending filament, I believe. And all the charms and stuff in there and the pattern. This is a mythical dragon, and it says designed by Mary Roderick. They they charge $4.99 for that. Maybe a little bit more than I'd want to pay at Goodwill, but I wasn't leaving this behind. I was coming home with me. Um, the other thing I got, and these had to come home with me too, um, the Castle by Teresa Winsler. 99 cents. Oops. Was I leaving this there? Mm-mm. And it has has the full chart. Even has even included a paper insert with the border. How shocking is that? I don't normally people take that stuff. I don't know if it came with it or someone printed that out, but that was really cool to get. And the other thing I got was Teresa Wentler's Wentzler's Petites. Castle and Dragon. Um, and that also was 99 cents. I'm not a big dragon or castle person, and I may end up um, just spreading these on with some stitchy love to someone who I who may like dragons, but I wasn't leaving them behind at Goodwill. Those had to come home with me. Uh, another thing I found at Goodwill was this Beth Russell's Traditional Needlepoint. And this is a Reader's Digest um, publication. And there are some things in here I saw. Okay, this is for Danielle. Danielle, if you're watching, look at how they have her stitching. She's resting her chin on her hand, and she's just lazily poking that needle down in. Because that's how we all stitch, right? Just like... Oh, damn it. Those were my glasses. Oh, so sorry. Damn it. And oh, sorry, I dropped them again twice. The first one, they landed like this. The second time when I picked them up, they landed like that. Anyway, yeah, this lady. <laughs> so weird. I just got to show that again. You stitch like that? If you stitch in like that, um, then I think you're, you're stitching a little too much. She looks bored. But I thought of Abby, Abby and Danielle when I saw this. This is the fox and hair. And of course, you know, I'm not a fan of that. This fox, but how they stitched it. Someone stitched it and put it. Oh, I hate licking my finger and changing pages and I did it. As chair covers. That is just adorable. I may have to send this book on to Abby. Or maybe... Danielle, or maybe they can pass it back and forth because I will probably never ever do anything out of here. Tapestry is not my thing, um, but they may like that box. Abby, hit me up if you want this. Same with you, Danielle. I mean, Abby, it's not like you're going to be doing anything. I mean, <laughs> the baby or whatnot. You can totally, totally stitch that up at the same time, right? <sighs> Rub that belly for me, Abby. I just love it. The other one I got is this, or saw, is the frog and stork. Look at that one. The stork hanging over that frog like that. And this one, I love the frog. I thought of Amy Loves Toads with this, actually. And Amy, you'll have to let me know. That's a toad, frog, or what? I don't know. Anyway, that was it. I made it in under 30 minutes. I'm shocked. I haven't done that yet. Um, well, thanks guys for hanging out with me. Sorry if my video seemed a little frazzled. Um, I, like I said, it's been a day and I'm glad I got this done. Um, thank you for watching, commenting, subscribing, liking. I appreciate all of that. I appreciate all of you spending 30 minutes of your day with me. Um, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the week and weekend. And that's it. Stitch all the things, people. Bye.